Yeah, um, first of all, thanks, man. You know, I, I took pride in what I did, everything. Um, it was always a reflection of my mom and my grandma. Um, I lost my dad when I was a senior in high school, um, and it really didn't hurt because I didn't know him. And I always felt like everything I did was just a reflection of them. So I constantly, no matter what I did, I thought about them. I bought some bad grades home and they cried. They didn't want to punish me, they just cried because they knew I cared, but it was just about them. And so when I was able to, you know, go to college, um, I played ball overseas for three years, I played in the NBA, no matter what, what it was, I continued to think about what they meant to me and think about all the things that they taught me growing up. And I always felt like every guy I met, everybody I saw, I can take something from them. And most of the time I was trying to take something positive from each and every person, but sometimes it, did, it didn't happen that way. Um, the biggest thing for me was um, I, I never even wanted to play professional basketball. I just wanted to go to college. Um, I wanted to get out of Oakland, California. I wanted to get married and get some kids, have some kids, have a nice house. Um, my mom always told me, this is my house. You do what I tell you to do. Well, I wanted my own house. <laughs> and, and, and really, that's, that's all that drove me was that I, I wanted to get out, see the world, you know, get a job and get a nice house. That's it. You gotta, you gotta do things the right way. You gotta treat people the right way in order for good things to happen to you. Um, and and that, was, that was what I did, man. You know, um, and it's hard. <laughs> when you get to the NBA, it's a, it's a, whole, it's a whole different game. Um, from the time you um, step out, um, out of your house to the time you come back, there's always somebody watching you. It was crazy, I was taking this online class and we were talking about, um, you know, doing your job and having people watch. And I let everybody talk about, you know, uh, being in a building with 400 people and, and having to address certain people and all those different things. And I say, well, listen, when I go to my job, it's, I don't know how many people are watching me. And, and it's, it's tough to do your job when there's a ton of people watching you. So I felt like every time I stepped out of my house, there was people watching. So I wanted to make sure that I did the right things because I didn't know. I didn't know if I was setting an example or not. And he talked about Al Harrington. It was, it was so funny. We were in a lockout year. It was 98, 99. We were locked out. And so a kid got drafted in June, and he really had nowhere to go. So Al Harrington was drafted out of high school to the Indiana Pacers. He flies to Indianapolis. He's working out. And I see him in the gym, um, really didn't know who he was or nothing like that because I'm older now, I got a family, so I, I wasn't paying attention. But he came over to me and he said, hey, I'm Al Harris. I said, oh, you know, how you doing? Well, come to find out, this guy just kind of drops him off on a Friday. He stays in the hotel for a couple of days and he comes back and get him on Sunday and drive him back to where, <laughs> wherever he lives. So he's like, can I stay with you for the weekend? I'm like... Uh, let me call mama and see what she says. <laughs> I called my wife, and uh, two years later, he's still in my house. <laughs> and I think that experience, having an 18-year-old in my house, um, I had my twins there, taught me more about how important it was to constantly continue to do what I was doing, um, to constantly set an example about professionalism, about working hard, about working through adversity. I mean, I can talk in front of a small classroom of 10, 15 people, but my freshman, my rookie year, when we had, we had like a scrimmage game and I had to get up in front of two, 3,000, 4,000 people, I freaked. I, could, I couldn't even say nothing. But I continue to, once again, you know, every time there's a hurdle, I'm gonna jump over it. I'm just gonna keep working and keep working. I think there's a commonality here is, you know, there's nothing that you're going to put in front of us that's going to stop us from doing what we want to do. Yeah. Nothing, absolutely nothing. And I love the way these women coming in here and they walk around with their heads up and they, they, they appreciate the fact that they're tall because it, 
took so long for me to get her to understand that that 6'2 is a gift. And that all it means is that it's going to be easier to step over that hurdle. Now they're going to have to put a wall in front of you <laughs> to stop you from doing what you want to do. And, and that's, that's what I constantly tell her all the time. And I think as parents, we ought to continue to tell our kids that, you know, God's going to put things in front of you, little things at first, so that you can get over them. And he's going to start putting bigger things. And that's going to cause you a work ethic in you. That's going to, nobody's going to be able to stop you from getting and having and doing anything you want to do. So that's just, that's just how I ended up doing my thing. I appreciate it.